It's been a couple of weeks since the RTX 4070 was released, and surprisingly, it's in a pretty good stock, even here in Italy. You can find an MSI model for 669 euros from Amazon. It's been a long time since we've seen a GPU close to the MSRP when it's first released. Is it really that bad? Well, we're here to find out how good or bad of a value the RTX 4070 is. Since 2014, NVIDIA has released 5 different generations of 70 class series. In September of 2014, the controversial GTX 970 was released. Two years later, the GTX 1070 in 2016. Another two years after that, we got the underwhelming RTX 2070. But a year later, thanks to AMD's competition with the RX 5700 XT, NVIDIA was forced to release a refresh, the RTX 2070 Super which was a more competitive product than the Vanilla 2070. Then, on 2020, we all know what happened. NVIDIA has released an RTX 2080 Ti GPU for $499 MSRP, or so we thought. The RTX 3070 was a pretty good uplift compared to the previous 20 series. But with the pandemic, the prices were all over the place, and nowadays, it's getting some flack because of its 8GB VRAM buffer. Well, let's be honest, it is really on the borderline. Then, here we are, two years later, April of 2023. NVIDIA released the RTX 4070 with 4 more gigabytes of VRAM, but also $100 more expensive compared to the RTX 3070. Now, let's take a look at the evolution of the prices. Let's start with the GTX 970 back in 2014. The GTX 970 was priced at an MSRP of $329. Yes, you heard me right, 329. Let's hop to the next generation with the GTX 1070. Over here, we got a $50 uplift in terms of MSRP. In 2016, you have to pay $379 for a 70 series card. Then 2018 came around and Nvidia released the RTX 2070 for $499, a massive $120 MSRP uplift compared to the 1070 with a pretty mediocre performance uplift. Then, in 2019, we get a much better 70 class series GPU, the RTX 2070 Super that replaced the Vanilla 2070 for the same MSRP of $499. In 2020 then, we got the RTX 3070, this time remaining at the same 499 MSRP, if only it was actually available at that price. And now, in 2023, we're getting the RTX 4070 for 599 which is a, another big jump in MSRP, $100 to be exact. Now, let's convert these prices in 2023 with inflation. And here are the prices if you're to buy them now in 2023. Disclaimer guys, inflation is not linear to all products. Different things get affected in a different way. So this isn't exactly the inflation uplift. I use an inflation website to get an idea in a general way for the purpose of this video. That being said, the GTX 970 would cost $420 now in 2023, and the GTX 2070 would cost you $476 or $77. Then according to this website, inflation calculation, from the RTX 2070 to the RTX 4070, the prices seem to have settled around $600. Does this mean the RTX 4070's MSRP uplift is justified? Well, let's take a look at the performance increases with each generation. I'm using Tech Power Up's relative performance indicator to make things easier. So, from the GTX 1070 to the Pascal GPU, we have a pretty substantial uplift of 47%. That's a pretty good performance gain. Then, going from the 1070 to the 2070, the difference has dropped by 10%, 37% to be exact. But if you take a look a year later, we did RTX 2070 Super, the uplift from the 1070 is a massive 52%. That's the biggest change we have in this lineup. If you have bought the Vanilla 2070, upgrading to a 3070 would have net you a 50% uplift. That's another good generation uplift in performance. But if you have the Super version, it's a lower increase, 35% to be exact. Then, from the 3070 to the 4070, it's only a mere 31% performance uplift the lowest uplift we have in this lineup. That doesn't look promising. Now, 
let's take a look at the MSRP difference of each generation. From the 970 to the 1070, it's a $50 increase. 1070 to the 2070, $120 increase. 1070 to the 2070 Super is the same $120, while both 2070 and 3070, also including the Super, of course, is $0 since they are priced all the same. While the 3070 to the 4070 is another big jump of $100. Now, let's adjust the MSRP prices to the respective year of upgrades. So, how much would a 970 cost during 2016 to see what really is the price differences? The 970 would cost you $334 in 2016 from its original $329, making the difference actually $45 instead of $50. You guys get the drift? So yeah, from the 1070 to the 1070, you're paying $102 more. From the 1070 to the 2070 Super is $95. Here's the interesting part. You're actually paying $15 less to buy the 3070 from the 2070 and $6 less from the 2070 Super to the 3070. Then for the 4070, from the 3070, inflation adjusted, you're only actually paying $17 more money. Let's now take these differences into account and insert them together with the performance uplift. From the GTX 970 to the 1070, you're paying an extra $45 for a 47 increase in performance. That's pretty good. Then here comes the 2070 from the 1070, a horrendous increase in pricing, $102 for a 37% uplift in performance. Then RTX 1070 to the RTX 2070 Super, still not as good but at least the performance uplift is actually good. You're paying $95 more for a 52% performance uplift. Now from the 2000 and 3000 NVIDIA GPUs, the MSRP has risen quite a bit. From the 2070 to the 3070, you're actually paying $50 less to get the 50% increase in performance. That's actually pretty good if you ignore that we were paying $379 MSRP back in 2016 compared to what we are paying right now. But gen by gen, MSRP wise, this is pretty good. From the 2070 Super to the 3070, it's acceptable you're paying $6 less for a 35% increase in performance. But then, here comes the 4070. To get the 31% increase in performance, you're paying $17 for it. Considering the MSRP difference adjusted year by year, its ranking is third, cost per 1% performance uplift. This doesn't look bad if you accept the MSRP changes. Now, let's take into account the money you were paying if you were to upgrade gen by gen. So for the 970 to the 1070, you're paying around $8 per 1% increase in performance, making it the best value in this lineup. Second place is the GTX 1070 to the 2070 Super with a $9.6 per 1% increase. Third place is the RTX 2070 to the RTX 3070 with a $10 per 1% increase, pretty close to the second place. If you upgraded like this generation, you had the best bang for your buck. Then fourth and fifth goes to the 1070 to the 2070 at $13.5 and 2070 Super to the 3070 at $14.3. Pretty terrible deal. But here comes the worst. From the 3070 to the 4070, a whopping $19.3% per 1% increase in uplift in performance. The worst we have. Now let's adjust the prices to inflation of 2023. Well, the pack has tightened a little bit, but as you can see, we're still having the same hierarchy. The upgrade from the GTX 970 to the 1070 still remains the best, while the RTX 4070 upgrade still remains the worst. Let's put both of these graphs side by side and examine. In terms of MSRP increases, the RTX 4070 remains the worst, getting a 31% more performance compared to the previous gen but paying $19.3 for it per 1% increase. While in terms of upgrade gen by gen, the RTX 2070 is the worst upgrade ever, paying upwards of $100 more for a 37% increase in performance. The RTX 4070 ranks third in this graph, but if you were to compare it to the GTX 1070's pricing inflation adjusted, you're paying an extra $122, making it the worst. But we're comparing MSRP to MSRP for each gen upgrade, so from 499 to 599 when inflation adjusted, it nets you around $17 extra for this 31% performance increase. 
At the end of the day, the RTX 4070 is the worst cost per performance you're going to get starting from 2014 with the GTX 970 to nowadays in 2023. I found this post on Twitter by 3 dcenterorg referencing an idea by Quasar Zone. The RTX 4070 is pretty much a 60 class GPU being sold as a 70 class while charging you way more money for it. It is this is just unacceptable. The budget and entry level class GPU has remained stagnant since 2016. This is just so sad to see. The last good upgrade of 60 class GPUs were the GTX 1060 and AMD side the RX 480 and 580. Then here comes the blasphemy of a laptop GPU they call the RX 6500 XT. Get that GPU out of the way, guys. <laughs> the future is looking terrible and bleak. Where Nvidia is rumored to release a 60 class 40 series GPU with only 8 gigabytes of VRAM, seeing the 70 class is pretty much a 60 class GPU, we're getting a 50 class performance for a 60 class pricing most likely. This is just terrible, guys. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. I appreciate the support. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe to not miss upcoming YouTube videos. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, just type it in the comments. I will reply when possible. Share this video if you know someone who'd wanna see it. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel. Take care and see you next time. Arrivederci.